Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. I have a question for you. Have you ever seen this file format? Okay, so let me open this up in my text editor and you'll be able to see this XML file. Okay, so I have a file name, I've got its width, height, and depth because it's an image, and then I have these individual sort of uh, annotations here. That's right, this is Pascal Vuck XML an annotation format that we'll be talking all about today. So today we'll be discussing what is Pascal Vuk, where does the name come from, and what are the best tips and tricks that I have if you're using the Pascal Vuk format, including why I still quite like this format, even though it's a little old. Okay, so first and foremost, Pascal. What is that and what is in a name after all? So Pascal is actually a uh, an excellence network funded by the European Union and it stands for the Pattern on Analysis, Statistical Modeling, and Computational Learning. They took a little bit of liberties with uh, creating the acronym if you ask me. Uh, and VOC is a the visual object challenge that the Pascal Society has run or at least ran from the year 2005 to the year 2012. This was a challenge where they put out for object detection where they released a series of images and corresponding annotations. And they said, researchers, who can build the best model to identify these objects and each of these images? And to get started, to create an equal footing for everyone, they released a set of images and they released a corresponding set of annotations. And those images and those annotations, you guessed it, used a labeling format that became standard because of this competition. And voila, just like that, in 2005, the Pascal Vuk XML format was created. And so it's become one of the default formats that's existed right when computer vision was getting pretty good and about as good as humans, if not better, over time. And so it's become something of a, of a norm, of a standard. So let's have a look at some of these example Pascal Vuk labeled images. So first and foremost, one thing to note is that Pascal Vuk has one annotation file in XML for every image in a given data set. Okay, so for every image, there's also an XML file. That's important because other formats, for example, like CocoJSON, only have one annotation file for all of the images in a data set. Not Pascal Vuk, it's a one-to-one -one match of image to annotation. So for example, if I pull up this image here, where if I got myself out of the way, on this image, I have just a single object that I want to have annotated. And that object is this black rook. So this, is, this image is called image underscore 0320.jpg. So let me pull up that corresponding annotation, image 0320.xml. Uh, so let me pull that one up. And you'll see that in my text editor here, I have a couple of key fields. In this XML format, it's structured like a tree, right? So I have an open bracket for uh, annotation and a closed bracket for annotation. I have a folder name. Uh, this one was just in a folder called disrupt1. The folder name doesn't really matter. I have file name. This matters. The file name in the VOC XML annotation tells your labeling tool, it tells RoboFlow, it tells all of these which file this image matches to. So here, this image 0320.jpg must match to this one here, and it does. So we know that these two line up. Then we also have data about the image itself. So the width, the height, and the depth. The width, of course, is this, and it's kind of a weird width, 2284. The height is 1529, and the depth is three, meaning there's three channels of color, right? That's how we get uh, RGB. Then we also have here um, the object. So here is where the money is in terms of where our objects are annotated. Now, you can actually specify additional things, like if it's occluded or truncated or if it's a difficult one. You can also kind of leave those as zero if you don't want to. Uh, but the bounding box, B-N-D-B-O-X, these tags are key. This is where we get the coordinates for where the bounding box is in this corresponding image. And you might be wondering, hold on, hold on, hold on a box should have four X coordinates and four Y coordinates, right? Because if I want to draw a box, I need this coordinate, I need this coordinate, I need this coordinate, and I need this coordinate, right? That's how you create a box. You need four X's and four Y's. Not so fast. The researchers are one step ahead of you, and they realize that, in fact, you can actually create a box with two coordinates, right? Because if you assume something is a box, and you have two points in space, and you were to connect them, well, boom, you'd have your box. 
So there's only two x coordinates and two y coordinates, which begs the question, which x and which y coordinates are these? Well, in Pascal Bach, you get the upper left hand coordinate of the box and the bottom right hand corner of the box. So the upper left and bottom right, if you draw lines between them, then you get a nice, neat box. Okay, but what about the numbers? Like, where are these, what number, what does this mean? So in Pascal Vach, we assume that the image is um, a grid, right? And with the origin 0, 0 in the upper left-hand portion of the image. So if you had an annotation that started in the upper left-hand corner, it would have a x min of 0 and a y min of 0. And then the bottom right-hand corner could say have 100, 100. And you'd have the first 100 pixels of the upper left-hand corner of the image. In this case, our x min is 957 and our y min is 452. So that's about this point here. And then if I have another point down here, the x, um, x max is 1071 and the y max is 635. So, I mean, the image is... Um, a little bit taller than it is what or the boundary box is a little bit taller than it is wide and that makes sense it fits around this rook quite nicely okay so that's i mean that's great when i have just one of those but what does it look like when we have an image with a lot more annotations okay so let's say i have this image here where it's the chessboard in the very chart starting chess state so i have all these pieces okay so this image is a, a 0159 so let me pull up 0159 okay and i'll open that up in my text editor Okay, so here you'll note that I have um, all of the annotations, each specified in this file. And so what's interesting about the Pascal Vach format is that you don't really know, if you're looking at one annotation file, what all of the possible annotations are across the whole data set, right? Because like in the black rook image, there was only one annotation. So we didn't even know, for example, that white pawns are in this data set. So that's kind of like a, a can be a, a tough sort of thing to, to bear in mind. Now, one other thing that I do want to mention, and this is something that I really like about the Pascal Vach format, okay? And that thing that I want to mention is what happens if you have an image that doesn't have any objects in it. In other words, you have a null image, right? So imagine a chessboard that doesn't have any pieces on it. How do you annotate it? Well, the answer is you can create a Pascal Vach annotation that doesn't, create, that doesn't have any objects in it. So you have an annotation that's just empty. And the reason I like this is because if you have an annotation that's empty, then you can signal that, hey, I actually meant for this image to be empty. And not every format has that. So by the way, if we want to see more about the Pascal Vach format, I can go to roboflow.com slash formats, right? Roboflow.com slash formats. And I can see all of these computer vision annotation formats. And we were talking about Pascal Vach. So here we go, Pascal Vach. Uh, I have all these example, or I have an example here, and this is a different annotation that comes from the hard hat data set. Um, so I have a helmet annotation for the name. But I mean, it's exactly what we talked about. Now, the nice thing about using a tool like RoboFlow is that you can easily convert Pascal Vach to any other format that you need, like converting to Coco JSON, converting to YOLO text, all of these sorts of things. And what's extra nice is that when you get the data set uploaded, everything is nice and in one spot, right? You don't have to shuffle between images and annotations. You can just see it all in one clear place. So um, that's really it. I wanted to talk about why I like Tasco Vach, why it's useful, and um, yeah, I mean, each of our annotations and so forth that we might want to see. Okay, so that's the, uh, the Pasco Vach format. Happy annotating. Use Pascal Vach, bring it into RoboFlow, and you can convert it to any other format that you need. Drop any questions that you have in the comments, and don't forget, like and subscribe so that we make more content like this. Thanks so much.